Welcome back everyone to Financial Shenanigan. My name is Daniel and today is November 15th and my portfolio is chugging along and now sits at $25,831. Today's video is going to be an exciting one because, I mean you've already read it in the title, I have opened up a new position in the TJX Companies, which is a parent company of TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and Home Goods. I'm going to be going over my bullish thesis on why I settled on this specific discount retailer. And a bit of background information. As I explained in my last video, I decided to sell out of my Dunkin' Brands position because they were being acquired by Inspire Brands. And over the course of 5 trading days, I did exactly that and now sold out of my Dunkin's position. All in, I invested $566.94 in Duncan shares, and when I sold them, I sold them for a total of $842.03, which gave me a profit of $275.09, or a return of 48.52% in just 4 months. Not too shabby if you ask me, but here's where we stand now with my TJX shares. I started buying them on November 2nd and have been slowly dollar cost averaging in and the position currently sits at $438.15. It still leaves me about $400 left to invest until it makes up 5% of my Roth IRA number one portfolio so I'll just be dollar cost averaging the rest. But the good news is I'm already up on my position because when the Pfizer vaccine announcement happened on November 9th, TJX companies, the shares it went up. 10.55%. I mean, hindsight is 2020, but it kind of made me wish I invested lump sum instead of dollar cost averaging. Still, my unrealized gains from TJX currently sits at 7.99%, so I'm not really complaining. But with all that background information out of the way, let's get into the pressing question of why I'm investing in a retailer. Because remember, the retail apocalypse is still happening and claiming victims left and right, and this pandemic only just made things worse for the retail landscape. I mean, just in 2020, we had major retailers like J. Crew, Neiman Marcus, J.C. Penney, GNC, Brook Brothers, and Lord and Taylor filing for bankruptcy. And even though the TJX companies it had to close all stores and cease online business for two weeks in March, and of course there's a possibility that TJX might also go bankrupt. But I find that highly unlikely and I believe that TJX companies is going to be one of the stronger retail plays that's going to make it out of the pandemic. I'm going to lay out my bullish reasons right after you hit the like button and subscribe because it really does help my channel and push it to a much wider audience. And also, I use M1 Finance to invest and if you'd like to open your own account, use my referral link below to get your free $10 just by opening and funding your free M1 account. Two of you lovely people have already claimed your free $10, so check out the description below to claim that number 3 position. And I don't know about you, I think that was a pretty smooth transition into my own self-promotion. Anyway, here's a breakdown of my bullish reasons starting with number 1, the Jim Cramer effect. Number 2, it has a unique business model. Number 3, it also has a great inventory sourcing strategy. Number 4, it continuously expands its store and distribution center. Number five, it has a very strong balance sheet. And number six, it also has dividends. Starting with number one, let's start off with some lightheartedness, but most people will tell you if you want to make money in the stock market, just do the opposite of what Jim Cramer says. And on October 14th, he had this to say about TJX companies. He said, it's an indoor store. It's not what people want right now. It does have some good inventory coming in, but it's not going to scream higher, I don't think. But since his assessment, TJX stock has gone up 3.87%, so I guess Jim was wrong yet again. But in all seriousness, make sure you do your own research before you invest, and don't just blindly follow anyone's investment advice. That goes for me as well. This video and all of the videos are just for entertainment purposes only. Make sure you do your own research. Now moving on to a more serious reason number two and why TJX companies is thriving in a retail world where Amazon exists is because of its unique business model. If you ever visited a TJ Maxx, Marshalls, or Home Goods, you know what I'm talking about and it's pretty chaotic in there with different brands all jumbled up together. And while this might deter some customers, bargain shoppers they love the treasure hunt because you're able to find brand names like Nike and Ralph Lauren at steep discounts. And what's more, there's a sense of urgency and scarcity because that shoe you find today, it might not be there in your next visit, so it's best to buy it right now. 
But of course, having to shut down all stores at the start of the pandemic and currently with strict CDC guidelines is going to prevent the company from swinging back 100%. But with so many retailers going bankrupt, this provides a very big opportunity for TJX companies. According to this Bloomberg article, the weeks during the COVID-19 shutdowns, it led to piles of apparels that many clothing retailers were unable to sell. TJX knows that, noting that overall product availability in the marketplace remains excellent. The company said it significantly increased its buying since the middle of July. And you know that TJX company is right there at the J. Crew, JC Penny, and Brooks Brothers liquidation sales. So stock up on inventory as it happened to make sure it can get nice discounts to release back into the customer's hands. This leads nicely into the next bullish reason, and it has to do with how TJX companies sources its inventory. This is from the company's corporate website, and it says that they have more than 1,100 associates that source from more than 21,000 vendors in over 100 different countries. And the training that these 1,100 associates get is pretty extensive. They attend a program called TGX University, where they offer merchandising associates specialized training, a year-long one-on-one -on -one coaching program, and store exercises to teach them everything about TGX company's off-price business model. And it is because of this well-trained army of buyers that TJX companies is able to you know, successfully execute on their mission to deliver great value to the consumers by offering ever-changing selections of high-quality, fashionable brand name and designer of merchandises at prices generally 20% to 60% below full-priced retailers' regular prices on comparable merchandises every day. And the fourth reason why I'm bullish on TJX companies is because of their continuous expansion. And we're going to get into some numbers now, which I love. And this is from the TJX company's Form 10K for the fiscal year that ended in February of 2020. They added 60 stores in their flagship brand TJ Maxx and Marshalls, which represents an increase of 2.5%, while their home goods, which is their home furnishing store, it also grew by 60 stores, which translates to an increase of 8%. And Home Goods is the one that's going to benefit greatly from this pandemic because it's basically shifted a lot of people's perception of work from home. And even now, major tech companies are going to allow employees to work home permanently. And once people are able to go out and about freely, there's going to be a major foot traffic to Home Goods because people are going to want to furnish their homes and their home offices. But the one downside is, even though physical locations are increasing, TJX companies have been very slow to establish its online presence. I mean, their flagship brand, TJ Maxx, it only opened its online store in 2013, and Marshalls is late to the game as well, having opened its online store only at the end half of 2019. And this highlights the biggest risk, I guess, of what you need to consider before you invest in TJX companies, because even the CEO has gone out to say back in June that we will not look to e-commerce as our major leveraging point to get us through COVID and out the other side. And their Form 10Q, their US online business, it represents only 4% net sale for the second quarter and first six months of fiscal 2021, and less than 3% of the second quarter and the first six months of fiscal 2020. In comparison, another retailer, Nordstrom, its e-commerce sales represent 61% of its revenue. But once again, it is not fair to compare TJX companies to traditional retailers because of its unique business model that draws in bargain shoppers looking for treasures. I guess that's not really easy to replicate in an online environment, but TJX is expected to report their earnings on Wednesday, November 18th, so I'm going to be paying attention to what they say about their e-commerce business and see if they have made any headway because if another lockdown does happen, it's going to get pretty devastating if you're just relying on physical sales. So make sure you keep that in mind if you do choose to invest in TJX that their online side of the business isn't their strong suit. In addition to store growth, TJX Companies is also expanding its distribution center, which I'm all for. In its 10K that they released in February, their distribution center sat at 19 million square feet in six different countries. But well, the great news is, in October, TJX Companies they revealed plans to build a 1.7 million square foot warehouse and distribution center in El Paso, Texas, with plans to later add an additional 346,000 square feet. Not only that, on the East Coast, they signed a lease for another distribution center to be opened in Philadelphia. And this is great news highlighting the anticipated growth of the company that management sees, as it also looks to fill the void left by 
all these bankrupt retailers and all this extra distribution center is going to enhance his inventory management. Now the fifth reason why I picked TJX as opposed to other retailers is because it had a strong balance sheet that's going to allow it to survive even amidst this pandemic. And this is TJX's balance sheet in its most recent quarterly report. And they basically doubled their cash and cash equivalent to $6.6 .6 billion since February. In addition, during the second quarter, they generated $3.4 billion in operating cash flow and it paid off the $1 billion it drew down from its revolving credit facilities in March of 2020. TJX also increased its borrowing capacity under the revolving credit facilities with a new $500 million facility, which brings a total of everything it can borrow up to $1.5 billion. And all this means that besides the $6.6 .6 billion that it has on its balance sheet, TJX companies is going to have an additional $1.5 billion that they can draw from if it needs it for any reason. I'm sure you and everyone wants life to get back to normal so they can go back to shopping and things like that. But because this pandemic is still ongoing, it's going to prevent the TJX company from falling scaling back. But it's a good thing to know and it's very reassuring that it has such a strong balance sheet so it can weather the storm while other retailers, they might go under. And also remember that their cash position is going to allow them to buy more inventory at their cheap prices right now and also expand the number of stores and grow its distribution center like it's done in recent months and years. And the final reason why I think TJX is going to be a great company, and this is just an added bonus, is that TJX, it also pays out dividends. At least it used to before it suspended it back in May, but it's just to conserve cash, which is a smart thing to do right now. I mean, Disney is another position that I hold, and in its latest fourth quarter earnings report, it also forgo its dividend temporarily, but said it'll bring it back and is committed to continuously paying it in the long term. And TJX company is in the same boat, and like I mentioned a few times, I'm not really focused on dividends when I choose my investment, but knowing that TJX has upped its dividend consistently for 24 years straight prior to this pandemic is something to look at if you're looking more for a dividend growth play. But once again, I'll keep an eye out on their Wednesday earnings report to see if there's any updates for the dividends. But for right now, TJX company, um, they recently stated that they did not declare a dividend in the first six months of fiscal 2021 and does not expect to declare a dividend in the third quarter of fiscal 2021. And has also suspended this share buyback program. Once again, all of these moves is done to preserve cash in the midst of this pandemic, which is a great thing to do, especially for a retailer. We'll see if there's any update in regards to dividends in their latest earning report on Wednesday. With all that said, and in the meantime, I'm just going to keep dollar cost averaging into my TJX position until it makes up 5% of my Roth IRA number one portfolio. And now that you've heard my bullish case for TJX companies, leave a comment below if you agree or not, and if you hold any retailers in your stock portfolio. But with all that said, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. And if you'd like to start your own investing journey, links to the description to get your free $10 when you sign up for M1 Finance. I hope you guys enjoyed my in-depth analysis of why I invested in TJX companies and why I think it's such a good buy. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Happy investing. Stay safe out there. And I'll catch you next time with more shenanigans.